What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs in another mind-blowing facts video. Today we're looking at one of my favorite states, Colorado, also known as the Centennial State. Colorado is right here in case you've ever heard a John Denver song and never bothered to look up what he was talking about. I always make references to John Denver whenever I'm talking about Colorado and for a few reasons. One, he sang a whole bunch of songs about Colorado and two, his name is Denver. Actually, his real name is Henry John Deutschendorf Jr., but he changed his name. I don't know why you'd change your name to Denver instead of that showbiz friendly gem. But he did, and he liked Colorado. Colorado is an interesting state, and I'm gonna tell you about some of the lesser known interesting facts right now. Number 10, the highest paved road in the US. Mount Evans Scenic Byway is the highest paved road in the United States at 14,258 feet above sea level. And no, you're not in the Mile High Club if you do the nasty up here. I looked it up. It has to be in a plane. Number nine, they turned down the Olympics. Colorado is the only state to ever turn down an Olympic event. Colorado declined the offer to host the 1976 Winter Olympics. It was supposed to be held in Denver, but the people voted against it, claiming it would cost too much, create too much pollution, and increase the population, which they are not keen on. They don't like getting more people in there. It's weird. Anytime I make a video about reasons to move there or whatever, Colorado's one of the states that has the highest number of people going, don't move here, we're full. That nonsense. What's ironic about this is Colorado is home to the US Olympic Committee and the Olympic Training Center. They still didn't want the Olympics there. You think they'd jump at the chance, but no. Number eight, Zebulon Pike gets arrested. Zebulon Pike was the first US explorer to travel through Colorado and he got lost and eventually was arrested by the Spanish. Zebulon Pike was an American soldier and explorer from New Jersey. I know most of you are shocked. He's from New Jersey and his name's not Tony. He was ordered to take an expedition to find the source of the Arkansas and Red Rivers, which led him into modern day Colorado on July 15th, 1806. He and his men tried to walk up what is now known as Pike's Peak, but gave up due to heavy snow and lack of food. They came down the mountain and to rest their weary bones, they decided to set up camp. Well, they didn't realize they were setting up on Spanish territory and they were arrested. They were released at the Louisiana border months later. And now Pike's Peak is named after him and he never even made it to the top. Number seven, sex change capital of the world. Trinidad, Colorado is known as the sex change capital of the world. That's because of Dr. Stanley Biber. Dr. Biber performed thousands of sex change surgeries in Trinidad from 1969 to 2003. He retired in 2003, 2004, somewhere in there. The clinic performed about 6,000 surgeries, sometimes as many as four surgeries a week. He was a very humble man and didn't like any recognition for this. You know, a lot of people saw him as very much a leader in this operation and this community. He didn't like it. He just wanted to do his surgeries and help people. Biber retired in 2003 at the age of 80 because the malpractice insurance premiums had risen to levels which he couldn't afford anymore for what he was charging. Sadly, Dr. Biber was hospitalized in January of 2006 with complications from pneumonia, to which he succumbed on January 16th while hospitalized. Number six, the Colorado nuclear blast. Everybody knows they were blown up the Nevada desert for years. Not many people know that they gave Colorado a blast too. Project Rollison was an underground 40 kiloton nuclear test near the Garfield County town of Parachute. Then it was called Grand Valley. It's between Grand Junction and Glenwood Springs, in case you're looking for it on a map. This happened on September 10th, 1969. The bomb was nearly twice as powerful as the one dropped on Hiroshima at the end of World War II. The plan for the detonation was to test whether mining for natural gas could be aided by freezing the gases with nuclear bombs. Yeah, I don't know how the science works with that one, but it sounds pretty weird. To this day, the Environmental Protection Agency runs tests in the area once a year to make sure no radioactive contamination has seeped away from the underground blast. I'm sure it can't be doing nothing good for the groundwater. Number five. The boys in the original hood. Colorado has had a lot of firsts. The first rodeo, the first root beer float, the first teddy bear, and of course, the first drive-by shooting. Denver had the first recorded drive-by shooting in 1876 when Court Thompson was shot from another carriage. I guess Cortez Thompson, which was his legal name, was somewhat of a rancher and had a reputation for other things. He was a heavy drinker too. He died of cirrhosis. But it was said that he always sold more horses and cows than he actually raised. So yeah, it's shady stuff. This is a great story that includes heavy drinking, getting married to a local madam, and having run-ins with a dude named Soapy Smith. 
He survived that drive-by shooting and, like I said, died of cirrhosis of the liver years later. Number four. Denver's airport. Denver airport is the largest airport in the United States. You'd think it would be Chicago, New York, Atlanta, but no, LAX even. No, it is Denver has the largest airport in the United States and a giant blue demonic looking horse out front as an art piece. An art piece that actually killed the sculpture. Yeah, it crushed him. And they still put it up. By total land area, it is 33,531 acres. It also has the longest commercial runway in the U.S. It is the sixth busiest airport airport in the U.S. and the 18th busiest in the world. In 2020, Denver International Airport saw 33,741,000 passengers. Now, that was obviously a steep decline compared to past years. In 2019, they saw 69 million, 2018, 64, 2017, 61 million, and then they were pretty much in the 50 million area since 2007. So it's a busy airport and it's huge. Number three, the Alcatraz of the Rockies. That's right, Colorado has a place that holds some of the most dangerous criminals in the United States. The Supermax prison in Florence, Colorado is known as the Alcatraz of the Rockies because of how secure it is. It holds all the most dangerous criminals, including El Chapo, who's the notorious drug lord from Mexico, Eric Rudolph, who was the Olympic Park bomber, Richard Reed, who was the shoe bomber, the Boston Marathon bomber, Ted Sosinski, the Unabomber. Apparently, if you like blowing stuff up, you end up here. They also have Robert P. Hansen, who was a FBI agent for 25 years, who was also giving information to the Soviets and the Russians. Yeah, nice guy. Timothy McVeigh was here, but uh, he opted to have his uh, off button pushed early. But his buddy Terry L. Nichols is still there. Number two, they got a lot of ghost towns. Colorado is home to an estimated 1,500 ghost towns. Yeah, that's a lot. Colorado quickly became popular when gold was discovered. Just like California, just a shorter trip from the East Coast. When you're doing that trip on a horse-drawn wagon, stopping in Colorado could save you a couple months and quite possibly your life from not having to cross a couple different mountain ranges. People eventually settled here in hopes of finding their fortunes and striking it rich and all that good stuff, so towns popped up all over Colorado, but as the gold was mined away, people began to abandon their homes and you know, head to California or whatever. I did some videos on ghost towns, uh, like last year. I could have done three or four on Colorado alone. I mean, ghost towns that still had some old buildings standing up. Yeah, it's incredible. All right, before we get to number one, I will leave a link to some other videos down below in the comment section that are similar to this one that you might be interested in. All right, on to number one. And number one. Peyton Papa and the Devil Weed. Peyton Manning was one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play in the NFL. He started his career in Indianapolis and eventually joined the Denver Broncos towards the end of his career. Around the time he joined the Broncos, he started doing Papa John's commercials. You know the pizza places? Being in the league for over a decade, he had some spare change laying around and Peyton bought 21 Papa John's franchises in Colorado before they legalized the devil weed that's so popular with kids and hippies. He credits the change in the law for his booming business. Several of his restaurants saw sales jump from three to $4,000 a day to six and $7,000 a day, with one chain reporting a 25% increase in sales from the previous year. Gotta eat late night pizza sometimes, you know? All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.